Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So, the Webster engine, uh, part one as the title suggests. So, uh, I did actually make a start on it in uh, my previous episode on the channel, which was, I think it was September update, um, where I did make part of the head. So, if anybody's interested in that, just go back and watch that episode. I'll see if I can put a link in the description to the, you know, where I actually made a physical start on it. Uh, but in this episode, we... Uh, pretty much carry on and start making some bits and bobs for this Webster engine. So uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a small single cylinder, I think 12cc, four stroke petrol engine, air cooled. Um, yeah, it's going to be running on um, spark as opposed to glow plug. So uh, yeah, we're, we're going to make a start. I've got to say a drawing, so I take sketches from my drawings on the laptop up in the house and uh, make the individual parts based on the sketches, which sometimes bites me a little bit. <laughs> so uh, that will be revealed. Anyway, so uh, let's get on with it. So um, I need to put the center hole in, which is where the cylinder is gonna attach to the cylinder head, um, or a reference center hole. So I just had a thought on this now. I'm on the back. I'm actually on the back face away from the cylinder. So that's fine. Uh, let me just look at my drawing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put in the four holes that bolt the cylinder on to the cylinder, or the cylinder head on, should we say, or the cylinder to the cylinder he cylinder head support. So just a touch off with a wobble pin. There we go. Let's just set Y zero there. I think I'll just. Uh, oop. Have a double check of that it felt a bit a bit heavy-handed the hundred thou end on this uh, on this diameter at the end of this wobble pin so, come on there we go oh, it's, yeah it was half a thou okay um, so I'll just set a zero there um, I'm gonna come in 50 thou just reset that zero okay so my distance I've written on the block 437 so just wind across 437 so and lock Y okay um, so let's just get a reference on the bottom which is my datum and my center point is two inches up from here. So let's just touch. Wait for the kick. There. Zero on my X. So let's just pull that one pin out. So two inches and fifty thousand reset a zero. Two inches and fifty thou. Let's just play with my lock a little. Struggling to get this. Okay, two inches and fifty thou. Set a zero. Right. Um, four, three, seven. I'm there, locked. I'm going to go zero, zero. There's my centre of the world where the cylinder is going to go. Okay, so I think what I'll do is have a look what dowels I've got and drill and ream a hole through the middle and that'll allow me to set up then when I put it in the lathe to bore the other side out. So I'm going to drill and ream a hole in there. Um, let's just swap to my drill chuck. Can I get in there? No, I'm going to put the head up a bit. Okay. Oh, didn't need to do that. I <laughs> had my quill right down. So let's just take that up. So I'm going to have a look at what dowels I've got that are appropriate for this. Um, yeah, that's all I need really is a dowel pin. So set the drill hole. I'm going to put an 8mm reamed hole through here. Got a bit of WD on the seam. Speed that center drill up a bit. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to change over to a collet, I believe. Um, you know, I'm going to leave that there. That's on zero, zero. I'm going to drill the other four holes first, which are for the bolts that go through the head and into the cylinder. So I know my dimension. Um, it's 875. Four holes, 875. 875 apart, 875 this way. 11.125. So, uh... If I go 11.125, no, 875 it's going to be, uh, right, half of 875, 4375. There we go. And 4375 the other way. Okay, so I think we'll use the same center drill. Now I'm going to use M3s. That is not very good. I think that end of the center drill has seen a better life. As I said in an earlier video, I need to get myself some new center drills. Let's get the taper started. So I've got about a three mil hole through here. Um, four, three, seven, five the other way. This is jumping about. That's better. And then four, three, seven, five, the other way. You get the idea, guys. That hole that's in the centre you can see at the moment is going to be tapped hole for the spark plug. Um, eventually. I don't want to do that until I put the bore in the other side and I've got to date them. So a slight change of plan. Um, I stopped what I was doing and thought I'd be better off coming from the side where I'm going to be boring it. So 8mm reamer. 7.5mm drilled hole in there at the moment. I've drilled the three mil holes for the bolts and also thought to myself at the same time that the bolts I've got aren't going to be long enough. So I'll have to look at something else for the bolts. Okay, that'll do me. Right, eight mil reamed hole. Um, yeah, so that's my datum, um, is that centre. So I'll be putting a pin in here, clocking it up in the four jaw, uh, clocking up this space in the four jaw, and then boring it out to the correct size. I believe it's an inch. Um, it's an inch and a quarter. Inch. Uh, I'll have to go back to the drawing. I think it's an inch and a quarter. No. It's an inch. It is an inch. So I'll be boring it out to an inch by, I think it's half inch depth. So, yeah, that's next step, put it up in the lathe. So I put the part up in a three, uh, three jaw, four jaw, <laughs> boring bar. I drilled it out sort of 12 mil deep uh, with a flat bottom 16 mil drill. And I've basically been boring it out. Now I've got it to depth, uh, 500 thou deep. Um, last measurement, I was at 997 thou. 
So I'm just going to bore another flower side out, which is where I am now, and we'll have a measure. So I'm looking over for a diameter of one inch. Um, it's not critical, critical. I do want it to be a nice slip fit on the cylinder. So I'm doing this first, and then I can polish the cylinder to fit with a nice slip fit later on. But if I aim for a nominal one inch, I'm going to be pretty close. Okay, 500 deep. So, telescopics out for this. Let's just open it up a bit. Okay. Do a good mic again. Nine nine seven six. Okay, bit more of a scratch. Just go half a line on my dial. We'll try that. So I'll just creep up on it, taking scratches, and we'll be there very shortly. So there was three thou left in there, or two and a half. Couldn't really have my hands in there, even though that's all his nothing, it's dust. Okay. I think when you get to this sort of stage, it's uh, patience is required. feed for this. So I clock in the uh, dull pin that was in the 8mm hole, clock the face, so there are all sorts of tapping about. I've got some aluminium on the outside of the shim just to protect the, the uh, outsides from the jaws. I can't run too fast for this because uh, i got a bit of offset weight going on. Uh, 450 500 deep I think we're going to be there let's just have another go Okay. Oh, you watch would be oversized now. <laughs> I think that'll do. Um <laughs> Okay, sometimes you win.
So I think that's everything on this side done. I just realised I've been a bit of a wally. Because there's no reason why I couldn't have uh, drilled that out and tapped it from this side. Never mind. I've just blocked up um, the sort of main, uh, what we call it, big end carriers. Two of the sub plates of the machine blocked up square. I'm sure you didn't want to see that. I'm just uh, doing the second one. It's in the vice now. The one that's down on there is done. Blocked up square. Um, so I'm uh, I'm keeping busy with it. So I've got the cylinder carrier or cylinder head bracket, I think, is what it's called, and the base plate there. Haven't done anything with the base plate yet. Um, there's still quite a bit to do on that cylinder head uh, bracket or support. Um, but yeah, it's it's all step by step and doing it in order at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is carry on with the cylinder. And I've taken one of my chunks, um, basically licked it off and cut off the bit that's not wanted. That's the bit that's sat there. Um, so over to the lathe. Um, I need. I'm going to turn this, which is the uh, crank end, shall we say, not the uh, cylinder end. The crank end of the cylinder, okay, not the head end. Um, it needs to be 1.125 diameter over a length of an inch and 60 thou. So I'm going to turn it to like 20 thou over diameter and only back about an inch for now. So I'm roughing out, as it were. Um, just using the power feed, using the DRO. I'll stop when I get to an inch. So I'm taking about a mill and a half a side, about 60 hour side off. Just drumming a little bit. I'm not overworking it. Could probably go a lot faster and harder at it. Okay, so. You know what, I know it's inch and a half, this steel. Just check where I am so I don't mess up. 1.125 finish size. 1.336, that's fine. So yeah, just uh, bozo proofing myself here. I'm well, making sure I'm not being a bozo. to cut this time let's see if we can improve things yeah choose a bit as you can see way too heavy on that cut without a center in anyway for the center I dare say it would have been all right Now 
as you can imagine, has drastically improved the surface finish by doing that. So yeah, I'm going to leave it about 1.140, 1.150. Just leave 20 thou on the diameter. So let's see where we are now. On bike 290. So yeah, a fair bit to come off yet. So final catch on this roughing out. Should drop it down to 1.145, 20 thou oversize. Um, as I said, I'm going to take it back an inch. Um, or do I do it to length? No, I'm just going to take it back an inch. I'm going to work all the dimensions from the other end. So we need to face it to length. I'm just going to touch the tool on the truck face. Set a zero. And I know I can come back and then face this to two and a half inches. So that's using that end as a data. Okay. I should leave about five cloud. Speed her up a bit. <laughs> Piece of swarf just jumped straight on my lip. It was a little warm. Okay, finishing cut. 10. So, uh, turn the OD now to one and a half inch. So, I've got some grooves to put in. Um, I just cut the first one to see what it's like. I tried it without the centre and it, it is okay, I can do it. Um, so my parting blade, or my standard tool, is 58 thigh wide. The groove has got to be 98 thou wide, uh, 94 thou wide. So it's a 36 thou difference. So the first shoulder has to be 250 wide. So I step back from the front face, 250, and that 18 thou, half of the 36, and put my first groove in at 268. So that groove is under width, it's not the correct width. But that's fine for now. So. I've worked it out, keep adding 90, 94 thou, or 188 thou, I should say. So my next groove is going to be at 456, which is there, and that's going to be in the middle of what will eventually be the groove. So second groove, now it will chatter a bit, but that's fine at this point. I guess 438 was correct. So I'll just move along to there. That's the right hand flank of the second groove at 438 and into 125. So I got the small boring bar in there, only 10 mil diameter. Um, I can't get the larger one in, I've got the larger one mounted up, 12 mil one, but uh, I'm having to go so far with the 10 to get enough room to get the larger one in there. So yeah, just boring it out, I drilled it out for 16 mil, 
and I'm just sort of boring a mill out per pass here up until I get to about 18 and I can get the 12 mil boring bar in there then without fouling on the bottom of the boring bar. So yeah, slow and tedious, but uh, we're aiming for a finish figure of 873 thou. But important, and it says it on the drawing, to keep it parallel. And another thing I realise I have done is when I machined these grooves, I didn't do them deep enough. I did them quarter of an inch deep uh, overall. Uh, 125 lower side and that was wrong uh, they're actually supposed to be deeper than that so I'll have to come back and attack them at a later stage so I found that the larger boring bar actually chattered and squealed more than the smaller boring bar so yeah I'm sticking with the smaller one and it just seems to be cutting very nicely now that's two lower side cut that should put me at about 870 thou. So yeah, maybe half of that for a final cut. And um, we're going to be getting towards our 873, which is my target size. But I do want to have a really nice finish. Again, when I finish this, I'm going to come back and look at these grooves again. Um, I did get that depth wrong, as I said. So I've set the cylinder head on the cylinder, down flat on the bed here. Squared it up against the back face of the vise on the parallel there and just clamped it to keep it square and flat. Put a little clamp on top of it, uh, just avoiding the two holes. So I picked them on the first one here with a 3 mil drill, which is what I originally drilled it with. Picked up on that hole, um, zeroed it up. So basically spotted it, put a 2.5 in, drilled through the quarter inch here, a uh, quarter inch flange here, then stepped across, stepped across, stepped across to the original figures. And I've done the same, so this is the final one now. Um, let me bring you around. I'm going handheld here, guys. So I'm basically looking underneath to see when I see the drill break out into that groove. So uh, I'm going to switch the camera off now because I can't do both. Hold the camera in one end and drill with the other. So, uh, yeah, you get the picture of how I'm going about it. Well, I don't know how well it shows here, guys. But I put a little tiny centre pop here. And another one on the block just so that i can keep that orientation i mean it shouldn't matter but at least i've got a reference with those two center pops um yeah i can't come in any closer can i oh i can try oh there we go i can't come closer there's the two center pops so they're there forever they're on the underneath they'll never be seen but for assembly i know how to do it so i got to that point and then realized it's wrong <laughs> I totally messed it up. I was going to swear. Um, so I drilled the holes in the end, made the part, turned all the rest of it. Now, when I machined the first bit, the unimportant bit, I counted up five grooves, five flats, all 94 thou, and I counted up that that was 940 thou. I added the half inch, um, so yeah, that was 1.440. So I turned the rest down to within about 10 thou of that. I completely forgotten about the quarter inch bit on the end so when i machined this back i went well very nearly quarter of an inch too far which meant when i did the grooves i only ended up with four grooves and four uprights as you can see so it was supposed to be five so this is turned back way too far so um yeah i'm going to use this as a practice piece for the honing actually um just to see what best method and what have you but that's scrap so uh I went ahead and made another one. Now that one is not correct either, but it's right. So, initially the drawing showed five grooves, five ribs, and as you can see I've got six grooves and six ribs. So my thinking there is, uh, having read through sort of various reports and what have you about the engine, is that it does suffer with overheating, you know, you, you can't run it for that long, it will get hot. So I thought if I increase the surface area by putting six ribs and six um, 
obviously high points or six pins uh, and six grooves then that gives the greatest surface area around here for cooling uh, rightly or wrongly so instead of going 94th out wide I went 78th out wide and it worked out approximately right and now we're back to where we were and I drilled the holes in just as I just sh uh, showed you so we're back to square one but with a modified cylinder that's going to be an improvement so whereas the one I made first of all only had four and shouldn't have five I've now made one that's actually got six so there we are. I think that's just a small step in the right direction. So next thing to do is the three holes in the side here. One is going to be the inlet outlet port or the manifold as it were. And then the two tapped holes where the uh, valve assembly screws onto. So that's what we're going to move on to next. Well, there we are, guys. I think that's about it for this one. Um, oh, one little thing has arrived. A little thing. A lump of cast iron, 100 mil diameter, 40 mil thick. Um, I often get asked where I get these sorts of lumps of cast from. Um, <laughs> I'm in the UK, as most of you know. A uh, company called College Metals. Uh, just looked them up. College Metals online. Um, you know, all bits, odd bits and bobs of cast and that sort of thing. I often get from them. It's not cheap, but uh, it, you can get just the piece you want, as it were. So anyway, as usual, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.